Okay, so we have ninth Sunday after Pentecost today, and the text in front of us is Genesis 15, 1 through 6. One of the, I will say, shortest, empirical, shortest texts that we have in the liturgical calendar, yet very well packed and um, loaded, or in some circles you will say it's a juicy text. It is. And we'll, we'll go through that. First of all, before we'll go into the text, uh, I might need to bring a couple introductory points. Uh, point number one, we need to read this story in a context. It's kind of obvious, you know, you need to read every story in a context. But sometimes it is less obvious or less needed in one case than the other. In this particular case, when we start to read verse 1, at least in my translation, it's ESV, English Standard Version, not English Second Version. <laughs> um, so English Standard Version says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. Okay, so the immediate question we should have asked, boom, after what? What things? Okay, so we flip, in my particular case, we really need to flip the page and go into, uh, into chapter 14. In chapter 14, we have fight uh, between five and four kings. And what happened is, I just welcome in, join, join us. Uh, what happened is, is one man, Abraham, with 318 Abraham plus 318 trained men, that's what it says in the Bible, uh, whooped that, um, part of my French, one over four kings. Okay? Those four kings, just right before it, they won over five kings. So he is alone with a person, personal, kind of like a Navy SEAL brigade, you know, kind of was able to calm down the pressure of the local tyrants. Right after that, then, we have an exchange of uh, gifts and blessings between Abraham and Melchizedek, and almost, almost, it is important, no interaction between Abraham on one side and the king of Sodom on the other side. King of Sodom also wants to give him gifts Abraham says, no, 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 from you I will take only what my guys have spent, so just cover my uh, financial things, no gifts whatsoever. After this decline of Sodom gifts, Lord appeared to him in the vision, okay? It is important with who we are befriended. Second thing. When we read the story of Abraham, starting with verse, uh, with, with chapter 12, from the very beginning, basically, um, we need to always keep in mind, he is an immigrant. He is not a native guy in this land. What happened is, as I think I already showed you, we can draw a, pig, uh, a map of Israel in three moves. So he moved here into this territory from this wonderful place, Persian Gulf, Tigris, Euphrates, somewhere here there was city Ur. So he moved here, he is an immigrant. Why it is important? When you are an immigrant, uh, three main foundational things in your life are seriously shaken or challenged. First, your name. Why? Sometimes it's good. Nobody knows you, and therefore, whatever you have done before, nobody really cares. Okay? That's why some of the people moved into New World. Okay? We know the story. Yet, some of the people who moved into New World, they had to start from scratch because they did not have their regular previous connections and the surrounding and the society and the... My dad always was friend with your dad, and my grandfather did great things for your grandfather, and we go back generations and generations. In the very beginning of 20th century, the parliament, or, uh, yeah, the parliament in UK 
they found out that uh, one of the supporting beam in the building was kind of in a very um, not well structural position. It was rotten. Okay, the beams that support the building are made out of the huge thick pieces of oak. Okay, so they went to archives and found out that few hundred years, about 400 years before, a particular lord of the land provided the oak to the building. So they decided to connect with the guys. And as soon as they made the call, yes, the oak is prepared. When we supplied you last time, my great, 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 blah, 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 father planted an oak, now it's ready. Okay, so when you have a name, it is you are well situated most of the time, well situated into a network of relationship. The challenge number two is material possessions. Uh, now, with our banking industry, I mean, technically, you can have a bank account, goodness knows where, have a credit card or a uh, debit card, and you know, you just slide it through, bumps, you know, lots of cash just jump out of ATM right into your hands. Not in the time of Abraham, for whatever reason. I guess these guys were not as developed as we think they are. So whatever you can carry with you is pretty limited. You cannot carry your house. Even if you sell the house, there is a serious, serious danger that you will be robbed on the way. And if you do not really have a house, if you live in the tents, and if you have a flock, it's hard to carry your flocks or herds from country to another country without them being beaten or have bruises or be productive. It's still stressful. It, it is a problem with material things. There is another point. There is another thing that is most of the time challenged or limited <coughs> for immigrants. It is the time. Uh, we don't think about that, but let me bring a personal example. When uh, people around me, when they started to work, by eight, let's say they started to work at age 20 or 18, uh, right after high school in my trade, some of them did, or did some kind of trade school and then uh, they got into industry, so around 18, 20. So by the time of retirement, which is roughly what, 67 or some, uh, something like that, they will have almost 50 years to be able to collect some kind of retirement plan. When we moved into US, at, well, I was 40 years old, so I have 27 years. So I have to act faster, more active and more productive because my time span is shorter my life is shorter okay so with this in mind we need to understand why how well not even why how god develops or approaches abraham and how the relationship develops okay because he in in almost every aspect or not almost i mean in every aspect he needs to rely on god it is timing that God set up for him when he will have a child. It is God who provided lots of material goodies. It is God who promised him in chapter 12, right when they moved into the land. Let's go. Verses chapter 12, if you want to follow me, chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, especially 2. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, from your kinder, from your father's house to the land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I and him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed okay and that theme of name and uh, great nation will be important for us for our today's text. So, let us jump back to chapter 15. Let's stay in our text, at least for a while. Uh, okay, verse 1. After these things, we already kind of talked about that, so after what? 
the, the only thing is that the, the word which is here, which is most of the time in most of the translation, is translation things, is the word davar, or actually after this davarim in Hebrew, which is surprising. It should be translated as words. That's why I paid attention. This appearance happened after what Abraham said. Not only what he did to the kings, but what he said to the king of Sodom. When he rejected his gifts, then when he said those words, then God appeared and then he started to talk. And what he says to him is, first phrase, fascinating. He just won of over four kings. Yet God appears and says, fear not. Interesting. I believe that the main connection, there are two things here. One of them is, even though you rejected the gifts of Sodom, as we have by the end of the verse, your reward should be very great. Okay? So it is not your problem to make sure that you will be prosperous and blessed if you will be in touch with me, not with King of Sodom. Okay? There is another important thing. Fear, and we will have this, fear not, fear not, fear not. When the, when the angel or the Lord himself will appear, usually people go into small state of panic. I believe it is kind of inherited. If we will jump back into chapter 3 in the story of Garden, what words do we hear from the mouth that slip from the mouth of Adam when God addresses him? Okay? We'll go in chapter 3, I believe verse 8. Nope. Close, but not. So, verse 8, the start of the paragraph. And they heard the sound of Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he, means Adam, said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid okay I feared you he had just few moments ago he had wonderful relationship with God he was appointed to take care of the garden and in the future he could foresee that his dominion would stretch over to the whole earth and then whole creation then he was giving this wonderful, blessed gift of his wife, and he sings this great poem. This is the bones of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and so on and so forth. We know it. Out of the blue, he says, I am afraid. And we know what happened in between. Okay? So he broke the, he transgressed the line that Lord kind of marked on the sand, in a sense, and uh, that, that, that crossing broke the relationship, and therefore he was afraid, okay? So maybe to reinstitute it or uh, recover from that, almost, not always, but almost always, or at least very often, Lord, when he addressed the sons of Adam, all of us, he starts with no worries, no fear, okay? I am with a good intention. To encourage that reading, what's the next phrase in chapter 15? Fear not, Abram, I am your shield, okay? So I am your covering even in the midst of the war. So we know what shields are, okay? That, that's what it is. And as I said, your, your payment or reward, which is kind of like a covenantal payment or agreement payment, would be not only great, would be very great. 
Okay? So then verses 2 and 3. Uh, very in two, one very interesting thing about verses 2 and 3. Both of them start with the same phrase. And Abraham said, I mean, in my translation, verse 2 starts with, but Abram said, and verse 3 starts, and Abram said. Okay, it, it, not in Hebrew, because the preposition, the first preposition is the same. I mean, it, it's a short letter, Vav, and you can translate it as, but, and, uh, sometimes even, or, or, I mean, however, you can even drop it, it doesn't matter. The point is, you have two statements of Abram. No Lord speech in between. Why? Saint Moses, when he wrote the book, I believe, uh, decided to point that out. Uh, my personal, I would say, psychological reading uh, would be that sometimes we even make this long, long pause between our statements when the topic is not as pleasant as we want it to be. But what is important is what, what he says is, is kind of like an almost cyclo. First he just makes a statement basically. Yes, you are my, I understand, but, okay? What will you give to me for I continue to be childless? Okay, the thing is, between chapter 12, when he was called into the land, and 15, past X number of years, okay? And God promised him to have a great name, okay? And a great nation. But it's hard to have a great nation if you do not have kids. I mean, I don't know how people manage that, but it's, it's kind of... Vital, it is important, you know, it's most important probably. We are right now re-watching uh, TV series. It's not actually a TV series. I mean, I cannot even say TV series. It's a, it's a internet series because it's net Netflix series, The Crown. If you have not seen it, I seriously encourage you to do that. Great, I believe it's a great thing. They did an awesome job to make uh, royal family, Great Britain royal family, um, Elizabeth and, and Philip and, and their kids and the Margaret the princess and mother the queen mother and so on and so forth. They made them alive on one hand with their faulties, with their problems, yet very respectfully. I mean, I, I, they did a terrific job. But the point is, it, it is about this who is gonna inherit and how it's gonna go. And in this particular case, she ended up as a queen of everything. I mean, everything in, under UK flag, not everything, everything. But my point is, if you do not have a heir, and, and his closest guy is his supervisor over, it's kind of like a, we used to have in churches this, this kind of position, Saxton, you know, the, 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 you know, the guy who runs everything. Marvel. Uh, no, 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 no. He is the president, so it's, it's a different story. But you got the point, okay? The point is, he doesn't have hairs. And in verse 3, he even reinforces, Behold, you have given me no offspring, okay? Or some translation says hair. And we'll come back to the point of hair. And, or actually in Hebrew it says seed, okay? So it's very, the term is very, um, I don't want to say anatomic or physiological, but very explicit. That's the thing, okay? So it should be one from him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, that's what actually Paul makes a big deal in his letters, you know, the seed that came and then we have Jesus the Messiah, okay? Then verse four, and behold, the word of the Lord came to or upon him. This man shall not be your heir, 
your very own son, okay, or the one, it's not particular, the regular word for son in Hebrew is ben, it's not the one. It's the one that basically, who in whom your name will be remembered, okay? That's the guy, he will be your heir, okay? Then verse 5 will come to that, give me a second. So it is, as I said, it is important for a great nation to have a heir. And however you want to play, do a play words or word plays with that, uh, if you look in the, like, let's say, Soviet history, Lenin had no hairs. He was bald. <laughs> therefore, he ruined Russian Empire. Stalin had hairs, and therefore, Soviet Union won the Second World War. Okay, then Khrushchev had no hairs, and that's why the Eastern Bloc started to fall away. And then Brezhnev had hairs. He was pretty hairy guy, you know, all over the face. And that's why the Soviet bloc, you know, actually attracted more countries in Africa and Asia. And then Gorbachev had no hairs, he was really bold, and that's why Soviet Union collapsed. So the importance of hair cannot be overestimated. Okay? H A and H E. I do know that. That's why I can allow myself those kind of dumb jokes. Because <laughs> I can always say, oh, sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> Though I do. Okay, verse 5. Lord brings him forth, obviously out of the tent. Because to see the sky and to see the stars, you kind of need to be out of the tent. Okay? So if the first appearance was in the vision, most likely in the night dream. You know, he goes out of the tent and he says, look at the skies or look at heavens. The, ver the word is the same. Don't be misled. Uh, and then in, it says, count the stars if you can count them. The thing is that the, re that the better translation would be describe the stars if you can describe them. I believe the point was not to see how many, but how great they are. When Lord wanted to say how many people would come after him, after Abraham, he says, count the beads of the sand on the seashore. Okay, that's countless. I mean, pretty obvious. Stars are a little bit different. I mean, theoretically, you can count, if you have a clear sky, you can count about 6,000 stars with no telescope or anything. It's, it's many, it's many, but it's not a great nation, okay? So the point is, your keys would be as shiny, and it doesn't say actually how so many you will have descendants, it's they will be like that, okay? So, as stars they will be. So, what does it lead us? We should immediately remember a few stories. One of them, few decades after that, let's say about 100 years after, there was a guy, there was a boy who came to his mom and dad and said, you know, I had a dream. I saw sun, moon, and 12 stars, 12 constellations around sun and moon. And sun and moon and 11 constellations bow down to one of the constellations. Sounds familiar? And then Jacob ran into his shelf, took a Freudian understanding of dreams, volume from the shelf, looked there and was like, oh, that's what it means. You probably have some kind of childish crisis, boy, because your mom died. No, he didn't say that. He un immediately understood that there will be a time when he and all his house, with older brothers included, will bow down to Joseph. It didn't look reasonable, but that's what it is. What do we have by the end of the story? 
Joseph, as we're well aware of, became PM for um, Imperial Egypt. He shine. He was shining as the star. Okay. Few years later, when these guys ended up in Egypt, and then they started to move out, when they moved out of Egypt into the land, on the way there, in the very beginning of their journey, God decided to count them down and tells Moses, put them by the tribes around the place where the tabernacle will be and count them down. And when they count down, we have numbers, how many men that are able to fight for the Lord were in every tribe. We know that in Benjamin, it was 35,400 men. If we will, and if you want to test me, it's uh, numbers 1, what is that, 37, 38? No, no, 36, 37. 36, 37, okay? If we'll take these two zeros away, that's how long moon needs to go around the earth in one, it's a moon year, basically. It's a full eclipse of the moon around the earth, okay? Why it is important? One more time, this is Benjamites. To mislead you completely okay first king of Israel was his name was Saul the tribe Benjamites moon not Sun therefore he has no dynasty he was replaced by Judean King David okay so he was a star for X number of limited years but he was not a strong star one more important example is Queen Esther, which her name means the star. So she became so shiny that her wonderful husband not only allowed Jews to defend themselves, he also supported financially the reconstruction of the temple project, really seriously supported. Okay? We know it from the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, when Nehemiah came and he was sad, and king and queen saw that his face was sad, and so on and so forth, and that's how the story envelopes. Okay? There is one more important thing, probably the most important thing that we need to remember. Sorry, not in the wrong place. Book of Malachi, the very last book in the Old Testament. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, 2 in particular, says, For those of you, okay, let's go there. Okay. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be uh, subdued. The day which is that is coming shall be shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, or Lord of armies, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun, S U N, okay, for those of us who are not ESL, S U N of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, okay. These guys, these ancient guys, would consider sun a star. We also consider sun a star, but for different <laughs> astronomical points. Whatever heavenly bodies, they, they, they had no, it's all stars, okay? It's sun, moon, and stars. Everything is over there. So this sun of righteousness will rise. Do we have the fulfillment of this prophecy? Yes, we do. If we will go at the very end of our Bible, just flip to the very end, chapter 22 of Revelation. Verse 16, okay, so Malachi 4, 1 and 2 is literally fulfilled right here. I mean, we have many connections, but that, that's one of the most obvious. 
I, that's a quote, okay? I, it's not about me, Jesus have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, therefore of Abraham, the bright morning star. What's the bright morning star? What's the brightest thing in the morning you see? It's a sun, okay? That's what it is. It doesn't mean that he is resigned from his throne every night and we do not see him, therefore he doesn't rule. The point is, he goes up, he went up when he ascended, so he is so bright, now he rules all over the place, okay? Forever and ever. And it is important. That's why even if it worked before, I mean, if you go into different manuscripts, the old manuscripts, the people try to figure out how their lives are connected with different constellations. And therefore they ended up into the noble science of astrology. Even if it worked before, I don't know did it work before or not, but even if it did, can you see stars if the sun shines on the sky? Yeah. No, you cannot. It overshines them all. Therefore, since he lived, died, resurrected, and ascended, so he is fully in his shining power, we have, we have no need to correlate our lives with whatever other stars we see on heaven, or on the tabloids or in the magazines okay our lives should be correlated only with one star the bright morning star of jesus christ okay let us go back so that's about stars let us go back to genesis 15 for one more point and we will have an end of the session for today Probably one of the most beloved and important verses for Lutheran theology. And he, means Abram, believed the Lord. And he, means the Lord, counted or reckoned it to him as righteousness or as justice. Okay, So that's where Paul, St. Paul, builds up his theology from. He quotes this verse numerous times. In the book of Romans, he goes into the very deep, detailed exposition of this particular verse for about two chapters in the very beginning, chapter three and four, and then he comes back at the very end, uh, closer to the end of his letter. In, Lutheran, in Luther's commentary, okay, this is, uh, Volume 3, Lectures on Genesis, chapter 15 to 20. Uh, the first five verses are covered by about 10 pages. Then the, uh, verse 6 by itself is another 10 pages of Luther thoughts. How it is related with faith, with law, with love, with other gifts and virtues of the Lord. Most importantly, this faith is what connects us or constitute or builds up our relationship with God. Faith and nothing else. Then definitely on the basis of faith, we go on and we go and live our lives and uh, we live them how Lord leads us. But it starts with faith and it is important and that's what we will talk during the sermon. So therefore, stay blessed. This is the end of the lesson. Comments or questions.